There are a number of artifacts, which can still be found all over the Earth, that are extremely hard for modern academia to explain, using their popularly attested and often regurgitated views regarding chronological timelines of the developments of man. Most of these surviving objects are locked away within the collections of wily individuals, people aware of the many other such artifacts, which have been found, stolen, and never seen again. These guardians of the artifacts have often encountered attempted robberies, switch tactics, and often offered large sums of money to allow these artifacts to just simply vanish. Yet fortunately, many still cling to existence thanks to a handful of individuals guided by a moral duty to share them with the world. And our next artifact could be seen as such an object. Known as the Dashka Stone, it is a controversial artifact that it is believed by some to be the guidelines used by the quote, architect of the world. Also known as the map of the creator, the Dashka Stone tablet has baffled researchers since its discovery in 1999, and as impossible as it may seem, a number of specialist Russian experts, after in-depth analysis of the stone, have concluded that it is indeed a stone map that is as much as 120 million years old. Created from a bird's eye view, presumably from space, the Dashka slabs depicts in detail the peaks and valleys of the Ural Mountains, including a series of very ancient civil engineering projects, including 7,457 miles of channels and dams with notations made in an unknown hieroglyphic language with an as yet unknown origin. Although mainstream academia will simply deny the possibility of the Dashka's true purpose and indeed age, many who have researched, mapped, and analyzed the slab have concluded that it is indeed somehow authentic and well over 100 million years old. Initially discovered by archaeologists from the Bashkir State University, it was actually found within the Ural Mountains of eastern Russia. Researchers were understandably stunned when they realized that the tablet displayed a highly accurate topographical map of Bashkiria, a specific area of the Ural Mountains, at a scale of approximately 1 inch to 1 kilometer. The map of the creator also retained clues to its artificial origins within its structure, comprised of three layers, each of which strongly suggesting to geologists that it did not originate in nature, but was indeed artificially created deep within antiquity. The first layer is roughly 7 inches of a primitive cement ceramic compound. The second layer is roughly 1 inch thick made of diopside glass, enriched with silicon, and the third layer, a mere few millimeters thick, is made of a calcium porcelain mixture. Who created the Dashka slab? Did they really create it over 120 million years ago? Like many specialists have reluctantly become convinced is the case? The Bashkir researchers derived this date from a pair of ancient seashells found locked in the stone slab. The first shell, Navicopsina munitus, of the Gyrodidae family, could be as old as 500 million years. The second shell, Eculeophallus princeps, of the Eculeophallinae subfamily, could be as old as 120 million years. How these shells were still intact, and if they were actually incorporated into the tablet purposefully, can never be known for certain. Regardless, it is unquestionably a remarkable object, and one which deserves a lot more attention. Many people are aware of the archaeological site known as Gobekli Tepe, an astonishing site of clearly great antiquity, a site like many others which dot our earth, which displays a far more sophisticated understanding, construction, and living practices to that of which would be publicly accepted by much of modern academia. Instead, it is often more favored to merely ignore such data as abnormalities, or it seems, if possible, to lock such controversies away from inquisitive minds, deep within archives or underwater. And our next site is no exception. Although Gobekli Tepe has become a synonymous candidate for evidence of a once highly advanced ancient civilization which once flourished here on our planet, it is not the only site to be found within the area, or even the most astonishing. Known as Norsen Tepe, this is the real gem of archaeological Turkey. And yet, just like Waffle Rock, 
a site we have previously covered on our channel, located within the US, it lay at the bottom of a man-made dam, submerged deliberately and conveniently very shortly after some highly controversial discoveries were beginning to be made at the site. An enormous mounded fort, designed and shaped with a purpose of providing a sophisticated living quarters, when the site was excavated, it was found that no less than 40 inhabitations were present within the strata. Excavations were conducted between 1968 and 1974 by the German Archaeological Institute. Archaeologists, led by Harold Hopman, the Heidelberg Professor of Prehistory and Early History, found considerable evidence to suggest that many of the later inhabitants of this sophisticated fort were themselves highly advanced, seemingly preserving many mysterious items left by many as yet unknown people. Why a government would make the move to flood such a location remains a subject of debate and one which has led some to accuse the Mexican government of being complicit in the cover-up of a highly advanced, ancient civilization which once lived here on Earth. The fieldwork was finished by 1974. Shortly thereafter, the construction of the Kiban Dam works began, rising the water level and submerging the site away from prying eyes. Who built Norsen Tepe? Why did they build it? Were they at war with someone? It seems this fort has remained impenetrable since the day it was built, even successfully keeping out the elements for untold millennia, preserving untold treasures from a bygone era, treasures which seemingly shone too bright a light for some to bear. What kind of controversial archaeology is Norsen Tepe protecting? What are these government's bodies attempting to hide? These are questions which must be answered. Thanks for watching, guys, and until next time, take care. In 1994, Klaus Schmidt of the German Archaeological Institute began excavations at a Neolithic site located within modern-day southern Turkey. Noted for its immense size and its undeniably incredible antiquity, Gobekli Tepe is an ancient structure made up of at least 200 T-shaped stone pillars, some of which measuring an impressive 6 meters in height and weighing a respectable 22 tons in weight. However, although it has been admitted as one of the oldest sites on Earth, undeniably contradicting modern-day paradigms in regards to the claimed dates of modern ancestral migration routes, the pillars are also covered with mysterious symbology, some of which has since been identified in an ancient group who not only share these same symbols within their culture, even to this day, but have since been hypothesized by a number of individual researchers as the possible culprits for the construction of the site itself, dating back to what we feel is a now lost antiquity. Gobekli Tepe has been academically dated as being at least 12,000 years old, yet any logical explanation as to who or indeed how the site was constructed remains conveniently elusive. Yet regardless of the unanswered questions that many people are still left with, even after academia's explanation, intrigue has seemingly increased since its exception into known site of Earth's antiquities. Modern studies have discovered compelling links between the symbolism of the site and that of the symbolism still used within Aboriginal groups of Australia. Famous for their ancient ancestry and their claims of a lost time before history books began, which they now call dream time, it seems that further to these curious beliefs, they also share an ancient language of symbols with the site, whose meanings has unfortunately been lost to the chasm of time. Yet regardless of their lost meaning, the similarities between this mysterious language and that of the symbology carved upon what is claimed as the oldest site on earth is undeniable. This realization has enabled a number of individual researchers to conclude that there was once a now lost civilization who they now believe and claim was once made up of aboriginals, who they also claim seemingly survived upon the continent of Australia, but were mysteriously wiped out upon the many other continents of the earth. Furthermore, it seems that there are a number of areas upon the site that mainstream sources would prefer stay covered up. The Turkish government recently visited the site and committed an act of criminal vandalism, filling a number of intriguing voids at the site with cement. The question is, what were they so desperate to conceal? Could there possibly be compounding evidence at the site, supporting the new and current hypothesis of the site once having aboriginal origins? 
It's undoubtedly a site which deserves more protection, one which we find highly compelling. Thanks for watching guys and until next time, take care.